Hello everyone, it's Shay here from Pro EMP again, and this part two episode of drum programming within Native Instruments Machine, we're going to be working further on the drum loop that we started in the first episode. Let's have a listen back to that to see where we're at. So as you can hear, it's a very basic loop, but it was where we wanted to be at the end of the last episode. In this episode, we're going to be working further on this loop, mainly looking at things like spatial effects and our group level effects. So trying to get this loop to sound as good as it can be so we can move on to our melodic parts. Now, when we're talking about spatial effects, we're talking about things like reverbs and delays. And a great place to start with things like reverbs, for instance, is on maybe our most percussive hits. So things like our snare drums or our claps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some reverb to our secondary clap. So the clap that happens on every second snare hit, which is this one. Now what this is going to do is give a little bit more environment and a little bit more depth to our drum loop. So in order to do this, I'm going to find the snare sound. I'm going to move along on the hardware and just press plus to add a new module in. And then I'm going to navigate to reverb, press OK. And then I'm going to pick a hall reverb for this. I'm going to turn the mix down to about 10% just to start with and I'm going to put the reverb time down to about just under a second, 0.8 seconds. I'm going to move across here and I'm going to take out all of the low end. So put in a low shelf. Now this is a built-in uh, this is a built-in reverb within machine. This is its own reverb module. And it's really nice that it has this shelf EQ so you can cut out unwanted frequencies of your reverb return. So let's have a listen to this now with our reverb added. Sounds a lot more flavoursome. Let's bypass that and play again. So as you can hear, it gives it a bit more space and a bit more excitement around the sound. So let's hear that in context with the rest of the loop. See, I'm really starting to feel that now. That's kind of where I want to be. So I'm going to add that exact same reverb to one of our little percussive loops that we've chopped up using the sampler. And I'm going to do it to the first one, the one that has the sort of snare and the filtered out hi-hats. So I'm going to navigate to that pad, go across, find my reverb, pick hall, down to about 10 or so percent, and just under a second. And again on here, I'm going to take out all of the low frequencies. So let's have a listen to this now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is move along and look at my overall sound of the loop. So not looking at individual parts just yet, I'm going to be looking at the overall sound of the group. So what I need to do is I, instead of being on my sound level, which is my individual sounds and adding modules and reverbs and effects to individual sounds, I'm going to select my group level. Now what this does is it puts effects on the whole group. So this effect that I'm going to add is going to be added to all 16 sounds. Now this is a great place to mold and sort of sculpt the sound of that full group. And because this is just a drum group, it's going to be nice and easy to mold and sculpt. So the first one I'm going to do is look at some equalization. So I'm going to Press OK, and I'm going to do this all from the built-in effects that are within the machine. So I've picked an internal EQ, I'm going to load that in, and it gives me the parameters that I need to use here. So I've got low, low mid, high mid, and high, and then I've got a low mid width and a high mid width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe give this a little bit more bottom end. So let's play it through and have a bit of a tweak. So all I've done there is add in a fair dB amount, so 6 dB at around 83 hertz, and 4 dB just above 1K. So that's kind of my kick drum, the lower end of my kick drum, and the high part of my claps and snares. And I've gone across and I've made a fairly tight width to those bands. So let's hear that with and without. So 
you can hear just with that EQ, it's bringing out more punchiness in that sound. Now, a great one, which is a really good tip for any drum programming, is to use something called a transient designer. Uh, and Machine comes with an excellent transient designer called the Transient Master. If I open this up now after my EQ, what this is going to do is give me the chance to allow more or less attack to my transients and more or less sustain to the tails of those transients. So I'm going to tweak around with this and try and get some really nice clicky, pokey, liquid sounds. See, now this is kind of where I want to be with this sound. It's a little bit more pokey. The sustain has been brought down a little bit, so those rolls are still in, but they're not as dominant as the main dominant transient hits of my kicks and snares and hats. So let's have a listen with that and without that. So the next stage after this transient master is going to be some saturation instead of compression. Normally people would think about using compression before they would saturation, but I do believe that saturation is a better sound than compression is if you're wanting that characteristic because you're not really compromising dynamics. You're adding harmonic frequency rather than pulling down dynamics and then pulling up the gain to make up your loss in gain reduction. So I'm going to go across and I'm going to search for a saturator and we have a standard saturator within machine so it's no it's not a third party plugin it's not a native instrument secondary saturator like the driver uh, this is just the built-in machine saturator and you've got some various modes here you've got tape tube and classic now i'm going to want to go for some tape saturation on this for more information about saturation please go to www.proemp.co.uk uh, and ask us a question and we'll get straight back to you and explain a bit more about this. Uh, but for the sake of this video, for the creativity, let's just get going. So we've got some tape saturation and I'm going to give it a little bit of extra drive. Now let's play around with this as we're going through the loop and see if we can get a sweet spot. So this standard drum loop now is in a place where we've got a good idea of what we're going to be starting off with. Now we can think about adding separate patterns to this. This would be considered maybe our nearly main drum loop. We may want to add some extra parts. This is what these extra six pads are for, just some overdubs or some extra parts to put in. But this is going to be sort of our main drum sound. So let's move back to our sound tab and let's think about adding a couple of extra bits in here. Now we've got sort of a vibe going for where the drums are going to be taken. I'm going to pick a new pad and I'm going to find a brand new sample. So let's go through and let's find some loops and chop up another loop. Now I'm going to have to pick a drum and bass loop for this. Uh, and I'm going to go to the Eveson loops. So let's scroll all the way down to Eveson. There we go. Use our category. So let's go to Wav loops. I'm going to go to Breaks loops. Perfect. And let's audition some of these loops. I don't know, I'm not really feeling these for this sort of track. Let's move on to a different sound library. Let's go back to Lensman. We've got some really good sounds from that on the one shots. So let's go to drums. Let's have a listen through. I'm going to load that one in. I really do like that one. That's got more of the flavour of what we're going for. So let's play that along uh, with our existing sound. Now you can hear the problem here. First of all, we're in one shot mode, so we need to go to ADSR. But the second problem is that the loop we are playing is at 170 beats per minute. And our session, our loop that we are creating, is 174 beats per minute. So what we're going to have to do is time stretch this. This is very easy to do within machine. 
you go to your sampling menu and I find my sample and I just move along to stretch. Now what I do here is press my settings and I can see here my source, I can pick a source BPM. Now it's given me the BPM of 85, but if I just change this rotary, it will give me 170, which is what it actually is. If I was to bring it down to 80, it would be half of itself, so it wouldn't give me the right, it would be an overly stretched time stretch. So what I'm going to do is pick 170 as the source, and our new BPM is gonna be 174. Oh, this is all I need to do within here. Now I just press apply, and now it's applied that, that quick, and now this will play just perfect timing with the rest of my loop. So let's record that over the top. I like that quite a lot, to be honest. I think that's pretty good. And that's working nicely into our group effects, our EQ, our transient designer, and our saturator. I may bring the input of that saturator down just a touch at this stage. But now we've got like a nice full drum group. Uh, so the full loop now sounds like this. This little area here where I've got one pad left in this row, I don't know about any of you, but I am slightly OCD and having this pad lonely and a whole row free, I kind of feel like I need to fill this in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this in with another rim shot sound. So I'm gonna go back to my browser. I'm going to change it from loops to sounds. I'm going to pick drum hits. We're gonna pick one shots and I'm going to pick percussion and I'm gonna look through for a nice pokey rim shot. That one. Now this rim shot isn't doing it for me. I need it to be a, have a bit more body in it. So I'm going to change my sound engine here from a standard to an MPC 60. Just gives it so much more body. Well, what it's basically doing is emulating the sound of a MPC 60 uh, old school drum machine. You also have an SP 1200 emulation but I kind of prefer the MPC-60. What I'm next gonna do is find my saturator and add some saturation to this rim shot. On the classic, kind of feeling that, that's not too bad. Now I'm gonna move back to my sampler and I'm going to change the tune of this. So let's have a listen and play around. Perfect, so I'm gonna record that over the top. And that now is pretty much our drum loop finished. So we've got three rows. We've still got an extra row of four sounds there that later on in our production, we can go back and overdub, resample, and get some, ran, uh, get some brand new loops and sounds out of this. But now we can move on to changing our arrangements in different patterns. That concludes this video. In our next video, we will be adding some more patterns and then we will move on to adding some melodic parts to this. I've been Shay from Pro EMP. I'll see you next time.